Hi, hi. Welcome, everyone, to The Decade, presented by Vimeo. My name is KK Apple. I'm from Team Vimeo. Um, we are here celebrating 10 years of staff picks. These are amazing films that our curation handpicks every day of the year. Um, and about a year ago, we launched a new program, the Staff Pick Premieres, with an amazing film called Curmudgeons. And we are so freaking amped. Wait, I think we get, have to agree that we can swear during this. We are so fucking amped to have uh, the creators of Curmudgeons here today, the DeVito family, Danny, Lucy, and Jake DeVito. So let's give them, yeah. Native Hostels has given us what looks like their living room furniture, oh, yeah. so. Yeah, I got the table for my. Yeah. Uh, my diet coke. <laughs> Drinking hard beverages, Danny. <laughs> Hi, y'all. Hi, y'all. That's the second time I heard y'all today. <laughs> Uh, we are so excited to have the DeVito family here. Um, we, uh, if you were at our, our last screening, we just saw curmudgeons up on the screen. Uh, it is a beautiful love story that is uh, punctuated by a fuck ton of swear words. Um, and uh, if we could just uh, talk a little bit about each one of you, how you were involved in the project, um, what you did to make this story come to life. Great. Well, I'm Jake DeVito, and you know we're all the family here. And um, I produced the film along with Lucy and uh, Dad. And um, I uh, <laughs> and uh, yeah, you know we 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 brought this project together through. Um, it was originally a, a, a short uh, play, a one act that was done at Ensemble Studio Theater that um, Lucy. Uh, is a part of, and um, yeah, you can tell them about yeah, um, all that. Hi, I'm Lucy, and um, hi. Um, so my friend Josh Conkle, who is the writer of Curmudgeons, wrote this play, and um, David Margulies, who's um, the star of the movie, um, was in the original production, and we're good friends with David and Josh, and we went to go see the play, and um, I just thought it would be a wonderful short film, a good part for him, good part for me, and something that we could all um, work together She's looking together out for on. me, make sure I get a good um, part. <laughs> but but it, we've, like, we're, you know, all in the industry and have been looking for an opportunity to work together, and... Um, just thought it was like an easy way into um, figuring out, you know, our working dynamic, a short, you know, it's not too intense, um, but it ended up being just like this w really wonderful experience and a uh, really labor of love. So, um, yeah, that's kind of how it came about. Yeah. And, and da well, David and I, uh, David Margulies, who uh, is the lead in the movie, he, he and I worked together in off Broadway in 1968. Okay, did a play together, and uh, a Pirandello play, and we've been like major tight close friends ever since. Done many things together, uh, theater and and uh, some TV and some and a couple movies and. And, uh, and when we saw the play, I, I just thought was really taken by it. Uh, and it was Lucy's idea. Uh, she said that uh, we should uh, think about it. And it took us uh, how long? It took us a couple of years to put yeah. it all together in our head, like wrap our heads around it and, and stuff. And then Yeah, yeah and so how, did, how does that happen once you've seen that play and... You well, were kind of t just kept talking about it as a family. Yeah, yeah. and I and I approached Josh, and um, he's a, first a playwright, but wanting to move into film and TV. And um, I asked him if he would be interested in making it um, into a screenplay. And so basically, we just went from there, from asking him if he wanted to do that, and seeing 
what he came up with, and um, and that was it. We were just si- decided to do it. Yeah, I think like the I mean the script. I'm not sure how long it took to get that together, but once we had that, it was so great from the start, mm-hmm. and like we basically just shot it as it was written originally, and. Um, I think it only took like a couple months or a month maybe for a prep since then that mm-hmm. we made the film. We yeah. shot, we, we shoot it in three days. Mm-hmm. Yep, three it days. It's like uh, I went to this, um, sorry, I went to, um, I have a good friend who's uh, in Brooklyn. We needed the Brooklyn home, the thing, the whole, th- so he's, I said, uh, you know, he said, I know this one place um, and uh, maybe you want to visit it and I went to visit and exactly, you know, just walked in, and he and I walked in, and and, uh, and I just went in the elevator, and I, I pushed four, and I, just random like thing, and uh, and the door opened to that hallway that 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 we end on, and uh, and begin on with Lucy, and there was a door open, I just walked down the hallway, and there was like one door open. It was early in the morning. It was like maybe 10 o'clock in the morning. And uh, I peeked in. And there was a woman in there and a caregiver, a woman like with, uh, with her, and she was eating cereal. And, and I said, hi, excuse me. I, I'm, I, could I look at, can I look at your apartment to see if, like, <laughs> and she did this, she obviously sits around watching television a lot because she like just threw her cereal in the air it was like you know, it was like one of these things and she said oh, you, you, you know you know this is the kind of thing where i just walked into her life and then and then i and she was so sweet joyce and she's so and uh and the apartment fits so well for the for, for josh's uh, uh story and everything was just perfect and it was uh, we we changed some furniture around and everything, but she's actually in the movie in the very beginning, yeah. outside with the women and the men talking in front of the place. We put them in the movie, and uh, they were just so sweet. Um, of course, um, when uh, when we went to make the movie, I I, I told them about it, and uh, the first thing Jake said was something like, "Why'd you push the?" Fourth floor. <laughs> so, you know, I'm gonna take all the equipment upstairs. You know, this guy. The producer was like, "Yeah, yeah, no. but, yeah it worked out." It worked we out. made it work. We had yeah. a great time. It was so much fun. <laughs> and I think one of the best things about it was showing everybody in the because we ate uh, at lunch in a uh, there was a, a communal room down below, like where all the they played cards and they were all, you know. All people who retired who were in this home, caregiver home kind of thing, and all the people around it. And they, the whole crew came in, all these, uh, you know, I'm the, I was as old as the people who were in the room, but uh, all the young people who were making the movie, it was really spirited and great, and we ate together and we hung out. And, uh, and then we, we invited them to the first screening in, in New York. That was like, that was the best. They all came to the first screening. And they all, we, we, yeah. Well, Most of the people a came. Of a lot of them yeah. came. Yeah. A lot who could, yeah, people who could get out. That's amazing. Um, so you guys have all uh, released films at festivals before this film that you pr- premiered online on Vimeo. What was that like to have a digital release for your film and get internet comments and interact with people online? Yeah, it was super exciting. I mean, we kind of knew that as a short we wanted it to exist online and we wanted it to you know we knew that that was where it was going to find a home um because you know it uh, it's amazing how many opportunities and festivals there are but just so we could we really wanted as many people as possible all different people to see this film and um you know vimeo is so great because i really reached the filmmaker community and festival community too so like we instantly get responses from like our peers um but yeah i mean it was it was really interesting because it's it's direct and you know positive but like also kind of like 
you know, that you can say whatever you want on, on the comment board. And Yeah, what yeah. did they say? <laughs> I mean, I would say for the most part, it was really positive. It, like, touches people and, um, you know, it was, I, I don't really read that many comments, but um, the ones I choose to read were very nice and, um, you know, uh, like, congratulations, I'm so happy I saw this, I'm watching it at work and crying, that kind of thing. It was just, like, nice to know that, you know, you're connecting with people who you don't know all over the world and um, it's so immediate. Um, so that was so great and just easy to, you know, just share with everyone and that was sort of the point of doing it um, was to get it out there and obviously not to like you know make a ton of money it was like to just like share the art and inspire and be inspired by other people so yeah um, this story is about curmudgeons do you identify with that spiritually <laughs> talk about what a curmudgeon is yeah no I, I do <laughs> yeah I'm <laughs> I, I'm I'm very like uh, curmudgeon like you know I'm I'm really honry and I'm like you know uh, kind of like self centered and I I want everybody to do everything for me and you know and uh, that's just the way I am so you know, I mean, like you know like I said I saw the play and I was like it's a perfect part for you <laughs> yeah yeah and uh, and David is also David mm -hmm. and I are like we're very you know, it was like I said, we were close for many, many years, and uh, he was brilliant in the play and, and, and in the movie. But, I mean, I um, kind of insinuated myself into the other part. Uh, it was years after we, I think it was a few years after we, we saw the, the, the thing, and uh, he was very excited about it. And, you know, David is no longer with us. David passed away. Like, uh, we shot the movie a year and a half ago or something like that, or uh, in, uh, in uh, I think it was in October, and, and he was very, very ill. David was really sick. He had, uh, he had cancer, and uh, we shot in three days. He was like an amazing uh, trooper because we, you know, you know what, everybody knows what it's like. Uh, to make a movie, uh, there's a lot of demands that, are, that uh, things that you have to, st you know, stamina kind of thing, and th th that was right in the middle of uh, all of his chemotherapy and all of his stuff that was going on, and he was amazing. And we, um, the producers, took care of him. The director berated him, no, no. <laughs> and we, you know, we, we had a, uh, and then uh, we had amazing fortune to, to uh, have worked with Brett Haley, mm -hmm. who is a filmmaker and an editor, and, and we brought him the film. I had all, the, we, we, had sh we shot everything. The, and you know, the first cut was like, uh, I watched it on, on the street on, on, on my, my uh, phone, and I was like, I knew, I said, this is like, and this was great because, uh, and then when I tempt the movie, I put John Bryan music to it, the sun, uh, eternal sunshine. sunshine music to it. And I got Temp Love, which is something that directors get where you, you, uh, you temp your movie with it and, you, and anything you put next to it, nothing comes up to it. It just, you just feel like there's no way you know, the, the, the music, his music is so poignant and so great and so simple and so, so we called him. And uh, I said exactly this, basically. We said that, you know, and I was, so we sent him the movie and he did the score for us. So I said, it's really weird to call you up and say, would you, would you, would you knock yourself off for my movie? <laughs> yeah. and so he, he did. He did a great job. And it's beautiful music, and it works so well. Yeah, talk a little bit about uh, the short form, just as a medium. What are the challenges? What do you love uh, working in short film? Well, I think um, what we got so lucky with was that this story had like a very clear beginning, middle, end. Um, and 
you know, I sometimes think it's hard to capture that in such a short, I mean, it's hard to capture that in long form as well sometimes. So um, I think, um, but when it works, it can be so effective. So I love seeing shorts. I love short plays. I love short stories because, um, you know, it happens, you can experience something very quickly, but it can be so effective. So um, I'm always interested in the short form, and I think it's also, like, a great um, thing for in our modern world. You can watch, you know, it's not a big commitment. You know, you can put it on your um, computer at work or wherever you are in between things, and you get the effect of watching a movie. Um, and you can watch it at home very easily and quickly. So um, I think it's really cool. I love, like, the fact that so many people are doing it, and and it's easy to share around, and I, just, I think it's great. So. Yeah, I think like storytelling-wise, too, you can just sort of get away with, you know, these really, like, you know, singular concepts that can be really, you know, touching and impact you all at once in this really sp specific way, and, you know, curmudgeons is like that, but, you know, so many shorts sort of, like, embrace this sort of like large singular idea and then you know you just form that into a nice shape and, and it's a, it works physically uh, doing it was like really cool because i mean I've, we've done i've done a bunch of uh, short films uh uh in my sh brief time that i've been acting and uh, but i've done like uh, a dozen or so and uh, it's directed, directing the short is like really uh, lots of fun because, you know, you, you're always thinking of the whole movie, of course, when you're making a feature. But this is like so immediate and so quick and so intense and everybody's into it and you look at it and you go, okay, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and that's what we're going to... We're going to make our entire movie Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. And like Lucy said, when you have a when you have material like this, with uh, uh, Josh's material is so uh, well defined, it's 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 like a, it, this electric moment that just everybody comes together, and it's like that magic moment. And uh, uh, so I I really I really dig that. And uh, I mean the thing about this one uh, also because of the fact that it had such a strong screenplay. I usually play around with things. I, you know, take the movie and change it this way and that way and the other way. I really stuck to what he wrote and, you know, and it was, you know, I thought, like, so good for me to be able to, like, have that discipline. And I, I liked it very much. I love it. Mm. So you guys are related. Um, <laughs> And you also work together. What is it like to collaborate as a family, especially in these like very intense processes? You're shooting for three days, you're making a movie all together. How do you, who, who plays what role in that working relationship? Yeah. Well, well, I mean, I, the, the director is always, you know, uh, put upon by the producers. <laughs> And I feel like, I don't think it's, you know, in, in, our, in, in our relationship, we have a lot of fun, and they do boss me around. And that's basically, from my point of view, now you can tell your story. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, we've been working together for a long time, and, like, this was one of the projects that we've done together, and, you know, we also um, pr all produce... Um, we have a TV development uh, company that we've been working together on. We have a few projects that we're producing in that. So we're, we kind of like hive mind it with all of our projects, whether, you know, it's um, the, the plays that you guys are working on or, you know, different movies or, you know, shorts. And we're always sending each other things all the time, which is good, you know, to have feedback always, you know, and then, you know, between us, we, we make it work. We kind of all get along. We're not like a very bickery family or anything, you know. We, I mean, we're we're. We like each other for the most part. <laughs> but yeah. Yeah. Exactly. But um, but also curmudgeons was, like 
I would say the first thing we've done from start to finish all together. So it was a good test to, to see that, you know, we can all get something done to like have a good time doing it and be proud of what we did. So I think we are going to do more, right? Well, every, every, yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. Thank you. I think with all this, anything I do, I usually send to them and they vice versa. Like Lucy's in plays and she call, you know, sends it to me and I burn it up. But I, whatever I'm doing, even sun, sunny stuff, I send, you know, I say like, you know, take a look at this and what do you think of that? And they say, that's so ridiculous. Are you going to do it? And I go, <laughs> yeah. But yeah, you know, we grew up uh, in the business, and so we have like the best um, model of like what it is, and you know, we're so lucky that we all vibe together and you know want to be working together. So it's a gift, for yeah. sure. So no dirt. Yeah. Is what you're saying. <laughs> but I am the one that gets. If I, as a director, they do gang up on me oh, and please. like. As, <laughs> Well, it's not... We gang up on you anyway. Yeah. <laughs> this is true. Yeah. Um, so, Curmudgeons is a beautiful love story. It's a short that everyone in the Vimeo office is just can tear up over or just dig your heart into. Um, and it also has this beautiful re LGBTQ relationship as a part of it. Um, you guys have done, you know, more political leaning work before. Are social issues something that you want to or like to explore when you're making, when you're making work? Yeah, definitely. I feel like, um, you know, being a filmmaker and storyteller is a great way to to talk about what's going on in the world and to um, share your point of views and um, and to reach people who are going through you know struggles and all of that. So um, and I think the the movie was um, created because Josh um, this was before um, gay marriage was legal in the U.S. Um, he was in love and um, his partner was from uh, New Zealand and um, they wanted to be together but they couldn't get married so he ended up moving to New Zealand to get married to be with him and it inspired a world in which you know um, there is a love but you're not allowed to be together and um, so it's great to like be able to present that where knowing where the seed came from how much it means to um, the writer and his personal experience and I think what we learned from like a lot of the comments and the people who are coming up and uh, responding to it that um, you know there's a lot of similar stories out there um, so I mean it means a lot to me that a lot of people can relate to it and um, yeah feel connected to um, to each other through through art through filmmaking yeah. I think like this film is like so powerful because the story is so powerful because Josh wrote it so that these characters are like you know reaching this age where they're finding their identity in all sorts of different ways and settling into kind of not giving a crap what people think when they you know in what they say to them and what they're like you know how they present themselves they become very curmudgeonly you know but also finding their you know uh, sexual identity and it's like this and who they sort of are and want to be in life and I think it's you know you know, super beautiful how they presented it and you know sort of crafted this story so anyone can relate to it because um, everyone knows that or has family members who've grown old and like sort of just like changed close to the end of their life you know nearing the end of their life and um, and uh, yeah I mean we always want to you know talk to our audience and talk to you know the world socially if we can you know I'm, we're kind of new to it but dad's been doing it for basically, a long time basically <laughs> i mean you 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 we really all know this right that we sh shouldn't let other people dictate our lives you know i mean yeah i mean you have to go with your heart and go with your feelings and these two guys i mean 
they're they're manipulated by their families because well it's ageism and it's like you know and they maybe they didn't want them to be together of course they didn't want them to be together but you know the love conquers all so that's where it is you can't you know like what we're, we're going through in the world today is like just uh, um, you know appalling I mean it's just like I, I hadn't been looking at my phone and I just saw this thing about the it's a big thing with the guns now it's just like horrifying I mean like I just feel so uh, saddened by it all um, you know and uh, we we just know in our hearts that we you know there are, there are things that we have to change in this world, in this country. I mean, if you look all over the world, I mean, there's like so much going on that is like uh, dastardly and awful and sad. But we have the power, the people have the power to change this. We can do it together. We can absolutely get together and <laughs> change the world. Yeah. Yeah. Woo. Yes. Hell yeah. Um, Danny, you're uh, so well known for um, big projects like It's Always Sunny and uh, a long career of large projects, but then you also have this kind of amazing way of blazing your own trail with um, independent film and your own production company, releasing films online. How do you think about um, your career or your next move as an artist? and? continue to reinvent yourself that way? I think basically go, like I said, you take, there's the abyss. It's there. So you take that step off into the abyss. And if you feel good about it, you say, well, Lucy and Jake want, were talking about this movie for, for a long time. And you, know, you go, well, what? let's do it. It's like, first of all, just go out and do it. And don't, I don't think you should, uh, you know, censorship is like really a bad thing. I feel, it, especially with your, you know, like when I was, I remember when they offered me, um, I'd seen Sonny, we watched the first, I think, eight episodes and, uh, um, you know, we really dug it. We thought it was great in FX. So the John Landgraf was, uh, you know, was a buddy of mine and uh, we, we gave him our, good feelings we thought it was a great show and I think six months later or I can't remember how many months later they said they were thinking about picking it up for the second season but they wanted to change things and they wanted to put somebody in and be, and he said what do you think if they you know write this character Frank and I said well you know let's talk and I talked to them and everybody around me is saying what are you what are you nuts this is like this uh, you know you you were on an iconic television show Taxi, and uh, now, all, yeah, but, and now, what are you going to do? You're going to do this this show that, you know, uh, it's a, and it, if you look at it in that way, you go, it's a blip on the radar, it's like uh, this FX, and it's like, who who knows, you, you can't, can you do that? Fuck yeah, you can do that. <laughs> you know what I mean? If you feel it, and people have written, because it's basically material, it's about the material, and it's about, and like, you know, not holding back and about sticking yourself on the line. And that's what I know they're doing. And uh, that makes me proud. And you just have to do that in life. That's, you know, it's not like, oh, I'm going to be also the sudden the architect of my career. I mean, you know, I don't know why, how the fuck do I know how to do that? You know what I mean? <laughs> just go do stuff that makes you feel good, that you like, and work with the people that you care about, that you... In this case, you love and then other, and uh, work with people who, uh, you know, watch your back and you watch their back and it's synergy and, you know, humanity. You know? <laughs> yeah, okay. All right. All right. And he can go on, you know. <laughs> I think uh, everyone in the audience, you now know, fuck yeah, go do it. Yeah. <laughs> Danny, Danny told you to do it. Right. <laughs> um, what are you guys all working on now? What are you excited to do next? Well, um, I'm uh, going to do a play in New York, um, which I'm excited about. Um, and, um, and then we're, we're working on stuff, um, like Jake was saying, this, um, we have a TV development company and um, we're developing um, this animated show that we're excited about. Um, and 
I don't. I don't know. We're we're, we're looking uh, for and projects. We're doing. And uh, we're doing an Amazon oh, yeah. show that uh, mm -hmm. we're producing that. Uh, we're working on, like it's a process. It's always a process, you know this. You're probably writers and directors and fans of writers and directors and movies. But it is a process and you have to take it a step at a time. And you look at it and you go, you see, what is this? How's that? What, how's that all gonna work together? And uh, so uh, we have a uh, uh, possible, we're gonna do a show possibly mm -hmm. on Amazon that we are working on now. Uh, for Jeff Goldblum and I, so uh, yeah, and Jake and Lucy are uh, producing it, and we're you know so we're we're doing stuff that. Oh, this is that's me. No, that's, that's that's that that. Hello. It, it, that that <laughs> was, Well, it's it's certain. It's a good omen. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, it was the God saying it yes. Meant a lot. Yeah. yeah. Okay. No, meant yeah. No, meant we're yeah. super excited about that show. Um, that yeah, we're doing with Amazon, and we also this animated show that we're working on with um, FX right now, and it's a you know, kind of, for us like we've had so much fun like digging into TV and digging into storytelling on that in that format, and you know it's like starting with you know this great writing, you know, and Josh has certainly helped us with a lot of this stuff as well, and, you know, understanding all that. And it's a, we're excited about a lot of stuff that we're doing, and, and every once in a while we pick up the camera and make a short, yeah, you know, yeah. which is yeah. what you gotta do. Come back to, you know, you know always do that. Video, put it on the thing. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> put it on the thing. Put it on the thing. Just you have to put it on the thing. thing. Exactly. Right there, you go look at it, you go, yeah. People will watch it. Yeah. 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 There you go. Like well, um, what are you guys watching right now? What do you love what, or reading or what are you excited mm, about to mm. see at South by films mm. you're going to? Well, we're only here for a day, but mm -hmm. we're, we're, uh, we're going to see a movie tonight. And uh, Yeah, we're going to go see the legacy of the white-tailed deer hunter tonight. Okay. I'm excited to see. And then, yeah. Hot um, wreck. Very excited. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, we're going to, you know, we've been watching all sorts of stuff. Dad just listens to you guys, uh, the news all the time. Do you guys uh, watch uh, Ever Democracy Now? Yeah. yeah. Oh, good. Oh, good. Yeah. Yeah. Put my hat back on. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. I think I'm like, you know, in a, I'm in that zone where I just can't live without that. And, you know, I've watched, you know, I do that in The Young Turks and a couple other things. And it's like, that, but that's basically what I do. Now. Mm -hmm. Anyway, I watch. You know, television and go to the movies and all that, like we all do. But I'm like, you know. Mm. Yeah, I'm, I'm excited for the second season of Handmaid's Tale. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Excited. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, gosh, I don't know. Yeah. I'm, uh, I've, you know, watched all of the movies. Um, <laughs> loved Lady Bird, loved um, Call Me By Your Name. Um, so, yeah, cool. Um, you touched on this a little bit. We probably have some filmmakers, aspiring filmmakers in the audience. What, um, what is your piece of advice for folks who are starting out, folks who um, are thinking about making their first thing? Make it. The thing, the thing is to make it. I mean, it, like, okay, write it, you writers. You write or writes. A writer writes. You ever see um, Throw Them Out From The Train? Okay, well, that's what his big thing was, a writer writes, you know? So if you gotta sit there and there's the blank page and that's the toughest, it is like a nightmare, I know it. And it's really hard, just do it. And, and never, never, ever let anybody tell you you can't. You just gotta keep doing it, that's all there is to it. Just go for it, you know? And then a write, write stuff, let people see it. I mean, we read stuff all the time, so. You know, scripts, stories, what? <laughs> you know, basically have to know yourself, know what's you, in your heart, and go after it, and don't let anybody dissuade you. It's a jungle. You're out there, and the, you're fighting through the jungle, looking for the way, the path, the right path. That's it. Yeah. 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 To Zen? Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> That's the third time I've heard it. I'm sorry. That's okay. No, it's, I said it once. 
Okay. I got it. Okay. Right? Yeah, yeah. So what do you watch as you're preparing Thanksgiving dinner? What? Watch? Oh. Yeah. yeah. Like the turkey? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I watch, oh, uh, this year we watched the dog show. Oh, Isn't yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 The dog show. Right. Yeah. That's that was so a good cool. one. That was good. Yeah. That was good. I don't know. We don't, we're not really a sports family, so. Oh yeah. Oh, I see. Like, it's a great got movie. A certain movie that you watch oh. during. Oh yeah. Oh yeah yeah yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, like uh, yeah. I mean, I don't know. Yeah, we don't have a For Thanksgiving, Thanksgiving one. Really. No, we but, don't have you know, a Thanksgiving yeah. movie. Princess Bride. Like, Princess classic, Bride. We used to watch a lot. Watch that all the time. Yeah. yeah. It's a great. Movie. That's great. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So we're all watching The Princess Bride yes. after this. Yes. yes. Uh, thank you for opening it up for questions. Uh, I think we do have a little bit of time for that. So if you want to, we've got a microphone here. Julie has one. So uh, this lovely lady in the front, because she's in the front. What advice do you guys have for an actress who has neither Broadway nor Hollywood connections? What, advi what advice do you guys have for someone, an actress who has neither Broadway nor Hollywood connections? Okay. <laughs> the actress. Um, well, I would say um, talk to, a, I mean, get involved in communities that, um, so I don't know where you live, but um, like I live in New York, go see a lot of theater and um, meet other actors, meet other writers and, um, try to write your own stuff and put it on Vimeo, you know? Um, try to, um, yeah, get, just meet people, see what kind of work you like, where would your ideal, um, what's your ideal, what do you want, and see who you know, who can, um, who is doing like work, you know? And I, I think that I've been most successful just collaborating with friends who I think we jive well together, um, and it, if that's theater, if it's it's movies or whatever it is, but if you can have that sort of like relationship, um, a friendship, that's a working friendship. I think that that's always a good place to start. And also, like I would say, for instance, if you're when you say you don't have any Broadway or Hollywood or anything like that connection, thing is you got to make a choice at the beginning. If you're going to start out you're an actress or an actor, uh, and you say, well, I want to be in, say, whatever city you want to be in. You know, find an acting company that you can work with, that you, you know, can communicate with, because basically a lot of it is doing it. So it's like you can go to California and you can know everybody, but not get to do it. Mm -hmm. You know, like the idea is, you know, you could sit by, a, you know, the beach or hang out and, go on auditions and and that's cool too but I think the best the best thing is to get on stage and walk out there with other actors and get a, find a good teacher find a good group that you work with like Lucy works with the ensemble studio theater mm -hmm. in New York and that's that's like to find Which something is where I met Josh who wrote the who wrote the, the movie. who wrote the movie so yeah. they all work together yeah, and there's all sorts of that kind of thing it's basically yeah. Yeah, finding a community, I think, is really important. There's and all get, sorts and of those organizations. And, and, yeah. UCP, uh, you know, mm -hmm. EST, there's like, you know. Yeah, different. And every, every whatever city style has you want to do, yeah. you know. Which is great. Cool. Uh, this guy. Oops. Oh, oh great. <laughs> I did. It's okay. Okay. I had a question about the uh, development of Frank as a character. When he first comes in as... Development of Frank as a character? Yep. Okay. Um, so when we first see Frank, we have kind of like the legend of the warthog and a very successful businessman. And it really takes until the moment at which he realizes what happens with Bruce where he really starts to fall off. But even if you look from season two to season eight, there's a huge drop off in terms of his kind of devolvement into the gang. Uh, I guess my question for you well, is... As, as a character kind of just going further and further into the gang. So my question is, in terms of the creative process, how much ownership did you have over that as a role versus how much were you working with the writing team at, at really setting that direction? Um, I, 
I don't sit in the writer's room at all. So I, I when I started, uh, like my, uh, I always, my hope was always to be part of the game. So I needed to be with, and in any way, support and be part of the game. So uh, that's basically uh, what happened. My, my whole life was uh, incredibly successful. I had so many, like I, I still do a lot of stuff without the gang that you don't see. Uh, and, uh, but basically, I, um, I needed to be in a spot where I could spend all of my money, which is very difficult to do, because Frank has so much money. They don't even know how much money Frank has. And, uh, they make no money, by the way, <laughs> noticed, uh, you know, they just, Things happen for them. Where, do they, where does it come from? It all comes. From, the way I look at it, it all comes from Frank. And I'm, I hope I'm answering your question. I don't know if I am. The biggest uh, thing when we would see you like preparing for a new season, the big question was always, how would you do your hair? Yeah. Before going into it, right? Yeah. So what? Yeah, I'm very, very, very into my hair. <laughs> and like, like it's. I leave it go because, like, last thing I did was uh, I, I was on Broadway in The Price, and I was even had whiter hair. I mean, if you can imagine, and shorter. But uh, so I, but Frank does dye his hair and very superficial things. I don't know. What, am I? Are you, Yeah. Yes. No, but the thing is that you really super successful businessman is not all that it's cracked up to be. It's like, you know, it's like there are lots of things that are empty in your life when you have billions of do lots of money. I don't, I don't want to say that Frank is a billionaire, but you know he is like he's got some dough, and you know the thing is that you need excitement in your life and you need some challenges. And uh, we're gonna hope next year I'll come up with some new ones. I've been doing a lot of diving out of windows and <laughs> stuff like that, you know. So. Yeah. Great. Where's my microphone at? Oh, there you are. Oh. Oh. Hi. How are you guys today? Good. Um, I really appreciate how you guys value family. And um, I'm wondering what it was like to grow up with such an idol in your family, Mr. DeVito, and if Mr. DeVito, you encouraged that in your family for them to pursue film or acting or writing or in the industry and, and what it was like growing up in this environment. Yeah, it was... Um, Great, great growing up in the environment. We, you know, we had a, um, you know, always had wonderful people coming around because, like, you know, Dad was working with all sorts of great filmmakers with um, his company Jersey Films, and then also, you know, when we were young, young Mom was doing Cheers, and that was like always so great, and that was a whole other community, and you know, I think we always had a revolving door of really amazing, you know. People and we learned that you know a lot of filmmaking part that we loved about it was the community and you know that's not always the same with every filmmaker but with mom and dad they were always very close with their their crews and casts and that was something that always attracted us to it I think um, but like I think uh, we're really lucky because our parents are um, pretty really down to earth and um, I think we're, we were raised in a really warm, um, like, non-Hollywood-esque family. I don't know. Like, uh, you guys don't give a shit about that stuff. So, so we, um, yeah, everyone knew who he was, who my mom was. But, like, it, I, it, it didn't, um, I don't think it changed, like, my 
our family. You know, we were very like close knit always, and um, you know, we were. Um, they were always encouraging of us whatever we did. Um, so we both decided we wanted to go into the business, but it wasn't um, something that was pushed upon us or frowned upon either. You know, it was um, really, they were just wonderful parents. Very them. democratic. Yeah, no. Progressively but, democratic. Yeah. <laughs> No, but yeah, you guys, no, yeah. uh, you you did a good job. Yeah, and uh, I must say, I mean, I, 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 I have to say this about them. They're in the room. They're not like the average, like, you know, you hear stories about people taking advantage of their parents or, and honestly, in, in California, it's very Hollywood or in the business. Uh, they never, ever, uh, I never, ever felt like they were... Uh, leaning on me at all. Uh, and I know Rhea feels the same way. So it was always good. But, but like she said, I ne we never, uh, you, you know, what, what do you want to do? Is this something you want to do? I want to go do this. Like our, our their, their sister Gracie's an artist. She's a visual artist. So she paints and she spends all day painting and doing things with wood and doing all kinds of, you know, artist stuff. So it's like, and, and uh, so it's really good. It's a good thing because I think everybody has to have their own like path. You want to follow it if that's what you really want. I remember I got bit by the bug when I, the acting bug and like and I just left everything. I went I lived in New Jersey and when I was 18 years old or so I just you know, I mean it wasn't the it wasn't the hardest house to leave, tell you the truth, but it was like, you know, I mean they were really good parents, don't get me wrong, and I had two wonderful sisters, but you know, I really got stuck into this. I really wanted it. I wanted to do it. And then I saw Battle of Algiers, and I wanted to direct. And I just saw, you know, I, what the hell is it? You know, and it's still, you know, it's still a, a you know, a jungle. That, like I say, it's a place that you have to go navigate. You can't, it's like you're a rubber ball going down the river. And, you know, this, the, you know, the wall, sometimes it gets stuck behind a rock. And you have to wait, and then it goes around, and it's going to flow. But you have to trust that it's going to flow. Life is going to go. It's going to keep going. And now I'm starting to sound like Alan Watts. <laughs> yeah. No, but I, I think, oh, sorry. Just going back to your question, like, a lot of people ask, what's it like growing up with, um, as you said, an idol? But to me, it's not. You know, he's just our dad. You know what I mean? So it's like... Um, I think it's kind of hard to explain, but it's not, he's not like famous to me, you know what I mean? It's like, just like, we're, he's my dad. Yeah. It's like, yeah. Great. You, you really want to ask a question? Yeah. Please. Uh, it's more of a comment than a question, and, and that's, Classic. you know, what, what Vimeo does, it, it gives us uh, indie filmmakers a voice that we don't usually get, and it, it's, um, and they, as we're seeing over here, the staff picks of Vimeo, we're, we, we're seeing the, all the cool exhibits with all filmmakers where we don't know their names, and the fact that something like Curmudgeons went out on Vimeo instead of selling out to someone like Netflix, which everybody does, speaks volumes to you guys. And, and I really appreciate that in the sense of you guys are bringing fans over to Vimeo to watch your show, which then helps them get onto the platform to view our work and our voices. And we so appreciate that. And thank you guys so much for making that decision. Thank you very much. And helping much. us get our, get our project seen. Thank you, guys. Great, let's, we've got maybe no, time I, for I, one I more. I thought it was going to be cold here. <laughs> Imagine I'm coming from New York. I, I, will, I brought flannel shirts. I brought, <laughs> the only thing I, I made a concession is I... Tomorrow. I think tomorrow. Tomorrow. It's going to be cold. If you don't I'm like leaving tomorrow. 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 But I didn't Stay wear tomorrow. any socks. Oh, no. Troll foot. Do we have maybe one more question? Oh, yeah. yeah, you. Hey, how are you? Hello. Oh, hey. Uh, I saw you in the restroom. I was nervous to say what's up. But, uh, <laughs> but no, I saw you in the restroom, but I was nervous to say hello. So, hey, you're badass. Oh, thank you. 
that. You know that. And uh, two things. One is, what is your uh, favorite Sunny episode that you were in? And also, if you don't mind, can you sing uh, the troll song? <laughs> you got to pay the, the troll toll to get into this boy's hole. <laughs> you got to pay the troll toll to get into this boy's hole. Soul, 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 soul. 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 Um, thank you. What's your, What's your favorite, favorite episode? Sunny. Is that your favorite episode? Oh, Sunny episode. Uh, well, you know, I'll tell you, uh, just quick, I'll try to do this really quick. First of all, when I read, originally read, where the, 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 the kind of uh, thing where Frank is going to be hide in a couch, <laughs> right, to find out, like, the, the ghost of Christmas past kind of thing, the, the whole Scrooge thing, what people really say about him, and this, that, and I'm at this party. When I read it, okay, I say, well, it's cool. And, you know, when I come out of the couch naked, okay, and it's cool, and then I... And then blah, 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 and this goes on, that goes on. Okay, so I don't usually, you know, do that. It's not like I, I think, I, I don't think I've ever done that before in my life. I mean, uh, I was in, uh, what was it, Big Fish before that, I think, where, where, the, where Tim had the camera, I played a werewolf, and then it came up the back, and so I was naked, came up my butt cheek real close, but, you know, it's like could have been anybody's butt cheek. Well, actually, it could not, not have been anybody. It was, if you look at it again, you can slow it down now and you could stay on the... Okay. Are, you, are, you telling, are you telling us we should do this? No, no, I'm just saying that... So, but the thing is, the, 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 the thing about the story is that uh, I didn't realize, you know, that it... I knew it was a party, but somehow it didn't click. That there was going to be me, those guys, and we'll, you know, the guys that I'm with all the time. But there were going to be like 50 or 60 background actors that I've never seen before in my life. <laughs> and I had to come out of that couch. First of all, they had to grease me up. I was like a, I was like a halibut, you know, like I just totally. And there were, you know, we had a tent. It was the most ridiculous thing in the world. Yeah, we had a, like a thing, you know, and it's all these rules about, I mean, I, I don't want to take my clothes off in front of everybody, but you had to have the tent for the union, had to have a, and then you get into the thing, and in three seconds, they're going to see me coming out of the thing totally naked. And if if you look online, there's a great moment, I don't know if you've seen it, with where Caitlin has the first line. I'm going, hot, 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 I'm hot. And she has the first line. And she never said the fucking line. It's just like, come on. You know, I'm out of here. I'm naked. Hot, hot, hot. You know, and everybody's looking at me. And then she does this take. There's a great take that's on. You can see it online somewhere. I don't know where it is now. But she goes, oh. And she's like, it's her, her turn to talk. But I think that was pretty much uh, my favorite episode. Traumatizing. <laughs> traumatizing episode. Yes. It was tra traumatizing for, for for them, I think. Yeah. Yeah, I don't think I'll forget Danny as a halibut. That's a that's yeah. a picture. Um, great. Thank you all well, so I, much I for. I also just wanted oh, to say like, thank you so much to Vimeo. Like this has like been amazing. Like basically we, you know, we came up with this idea to do this film, and you know we knew we wanted it to be on Vimeo um, because. We just knew that this community was like so strong, and we knew that when we sent it out, all of our peers would get to see it, and people from you know filmmakers at all different ends of the spectrum. You know, it's such like a wonderful platform, and everyone's been so awesome. It's been like such an honor to be part of the Staff Picks program, and you know, we're just yeah. excited to be here. Like, thank you so much for having us out here. Thank you, yeah. thank you all. If you haven't seen it, uh, the Curmudgeons Theater is uh, through, when you go back into the lobby and to the right, it's closed right now, but we're open 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. tomorrow. Thank you, DeVito family. Thanks, KK. Thank you, South By. Thank you.